the idea of developer experience kind of, in my mind at least, goes beyond just the experience a developer has working with a programmable interface, be it an API or an SDK. You know, it's, it's really easy to say that sort of phrase, like, oh, it goes beyond this. We love to say these thought leadership statements. But at the end of the day, the vast majority of the community members that I'm looking at off camera here that are interacting in hands-on labs or workshops or whatever, yeah. they, the experience that those developers at any stage are having with an API from Cisco or a partner um, is one component of what we need to focus on. But from the partner perspective, I think it'd be really interesting to learn about how you think about developer experience, and then more importantly, how you're trying to evolve the work that Highlight does and what you're offering yeah. to partners and, and uh, customers as a result by learning from those developers' experience so you can develop something new or evolve something new. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's really interesting seeing the kinds of uh, things that developers are trying to do at, um, in the DevNet zone and wider in, in Cisco Live, because you always see some interesting use cases of scenarios that they're developing against that yeah. um, solve problems or you know cause it, create outcomes that are good for everybody. So, uh, so yeah, so we Highlight is a, a developer partner of Cisco, so we integrate with the um, Meraki dashboard API with the uh, Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN manager uh, API, and just this week we've integrated with the uh, Thousand Eyes API. Um, so, so we're a big consumer of, of Cisco's APIs ourselves, um, and um, have been working hard in making those as scalable and as efficient and be good API citizens, because you know, we don't want to create too much load. Um, and then similarly, when we're working with our service provider partners, who are the typical companies that use Highlight, um, we understand a little bit about what they're trying to do, and hopefully Highlight reduces some of their development load because they don't have to develop it themselves. They can use Highlight and, and get the advantage of it. Um, or sometimes they may be working on an automation piece, um, and that's something that we don't particularly uh, focus on, so sure. we can understand how they're working. But we're, we're seeing something actually, just as a slide aside, that's quite interesting, is now multiple companies all hitting APIs at the same time. Um, and going back to my point about being good API citizens, this is definitely something I think is going to be something coming in the future, is with multiple ecosystem partners all touching an API, and partners themselves and businesses themselves all hitting the API, are we going to start fighting against each other? There's obviously limited resources, so we want to make sure that everybody works nicely together. Yeah. Um, so that's, I'm really excited to see the things like the uh, API, uh, there's some API advances coming along on the Meraki dashboard. I think they're making it easier to see who, is it, who else is using the API and how often it's being used, what the API load is like, so we can all play nice with each other and, and you know, work in the same same customer. Absolutely. And I, what I, I think what I really love about hearing the way you describe that is on the surface, it's not really just the surface, but let's just say on the surface, the idea of being a good API citizen and being able to work well and, you know, Meraki as a platform and then beyond that, the platform you build yeah. um, or highlight supports for service providers is one aspect of that, of like understanding how everyone's using it, make yeah, sure we can all play well together. But I think the second aspect of that is the fact that that's a conversation that needs to be had now. Maybe yeah. even just a few years ago, it would have been, eh, we'll worry about that when that's a problem, yeah. but it's not a problem yeah. yet. And now it's like, oh, that is something, and I don't want to say it's a problem, it's a good problem. But it's, it's a good one to be able to talk about. Now to say, look, yeah, this yeah. is something that's happening that yeah. we're, we're, we're interacting or we're next to each other in these things, and yeah. that's only increasing. Yes. That's really fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, I mean, we've got an example of a, a partner, a service provider partner and a customer just this last week where we were collecting data from the Meraki dashboard API. It was going perfectly well, really good. And then suddenly we start seeing um, busy errors, uh, 49s. And we can then go and look at the API and we saw that a script had been run somewhere else that was just a bit out of control. It was just hammering things too hard, way too frequently, didn't need to. And so we could get hold of the partner and say, do you know what that is? And they go, uh, we know what that is. We go and talk to the customer. Uh, do you want to make some changes here? Mm -hmm. Tweak it down. Everyone, everyone can play with each other nicely again. It was, it's just a simple example, but it, uh, yeah, you're right. It's going to happen more and more. Um, and we're, we're trying to kind of set up good connections with each of the other ecosystem partners. So when we know that, say we're working with a customer that's also working with Boundless Digital or Every Angle or Splash Access or one of those guys, and we're all hitting the APIs at a similar kind of rate, that we know that we can work nicely together and, yeah. and it all works. That's fantastic. If you don't mind for a second, I, I would love to explore some of those a little bit more, but I would love also to kind of take a step back from the um, how each of these providers and businesses are working together, um, off, kind of in the green room, so to speak. We were talking a bit about this ahead of time, and a couple of the use cases that you had brought up related to um, 
uh, either new things highlights developing, yeah. but kind of more to the point, like how those new things you're developing are there to support the provide service providers you work yeah. with. Could you talk us through a little bit about what some of those kind of not just the thing that you created and that you're yeah. showing here at the event, but why were those things created? If you could talk yeah, us through some of that, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. So, so kind of really the, the, the key area that we're helping is around this area of managed services. So a service provider partner or a system integrator getting into being a service provider is trying to help their customer with a variety of, of, of elements of their, their IT infrastructure and, um, and network. And what they all ultimately want to be able to do is rather than just sell, well here is an SD-WAN network or here is a connection into a site, they want to try and make their managed service more relevant to what the customer wants. And what the customer wants is reliable access to salesforce.com or reliable access if it's a retailer to their payment system. Actually, at the core, they don't really care what type of connections are in that location. They just want to know that they can get access to what it, their payment system, whatever it is. So from a managed service point of view, managed services are evolving to try and focus on the, the outcome, which is making you know, a good payment in a, in a retailer. And they then need to be able to prove, the service provider that's providing that managed service needs to be able to prove to the customer that they are doing that. And that's where Highlight comes in. We collect the data in from the network and sh show in a way that's easy for the service provider and the customer to understand that that experience of accessing um, uh, uh, Salesforce or what have you is hitting to target and it's going well. So we've just integrated with Thousand Eyes to bring that data into Highlight as well as data from the Meraki dashboard API, so for the Meraki SD-WAN and from the switch or Wi-Fi, and from potentially their network connectivity, which might be traditional ISRs, Catalyst, mm -hmm. um, for the broadband or ethernet services, and, and potentially other parts of the network as well, and bring it all together in a simple managed services uh, view. Interesting. I, you know, you had mentioned this before, but as, as you were talking now, it got me thinking a little bit that one of the, one of the challenges I think we've run into um, in DevNet specifically, but as we think about the idea or the role of the application developer, the yeah. application owner in a lot of the work that we do, especially as network engineers or network-centric people, is we tend to think about the network and yeah. constructs related to the network. Yeah, yeah. But what's so interesting about that is as a tangent from that, you were mentioning Salesforce. Yeah. Those are people who manage Salesforce, they're app owners. They're they're not networking people. Yeah. And so they're they're relying on others, but it's almost, it's always kind of been the throw over the wall. Hey, is your thing working? If it's not, please go fix your thing. Yeah, yeah. And I like this idea that that what you're in helping to enable is not just the creating the additional visibility, but more importantly, starting to help an app owner or a developer and the folks that own parts of these network constructs start to see each other a little bit more frequently as yes. just colleagues or peers yes. that can actually help one another. Oh, yeah, yeah, They're yeah. not like, yeah. I do these things and you do these things yes. and <laughs> never shall we meet in between. Yes. Oh, it's, it's, you know, it's the classic thing of my users can't access the application. Of course it's a network for. You know, IT is, is kind of a large group of people all responsible for their different areas and domains. Um, and particularly when you bring managed services into it as well, you have service providers in part of that. And those service providers need to be a virtual member of that customer's IT department. And for them to do that, they need to not just be an external vendor kind of saying, well, you know, here is our contract and here is our network. They need to act as somebody responsible for the network. And that might even be pushing back on the application team in the customer and saying, no, 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 no. You, you might think it's a network, but it's not. And we can show you actually that it is working nicely. You know, here is a Thousand Eyes report. It's showing where the, app, the uh, uh, packet loss is. We're showing uh, application issues over here. Let's work together to see if we can find a way of better routing the, the, the traffic. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing almost IT themselves doing that, but with service providers in play, they need to be that person as well. Right. And they need to have that almost access to the information and the confidence they could sit around a virtual board table with their customers' IT and, and fight their corner, not just kind of cower back and say, oh, don't be sorry, sir, we'll go off and find that issue the for triage you. room or something. It's, it's like, yeah. it's not me, it's not me, yeah, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah. it's, that's, that's, you just can't do that anymore. You've, you've got to be there owning your area. And yeah. if you own the network, you've got to have everything on your fingertips so that you can prove that the network is good and that the application is being properly prioritized and is being rooted in the correct direction. So if you have all of that information to your hand, you, you're, you're, you know, you become a trusted member of that team. Right. If you don't, you're just being, you know, all you're doing is you're having information fired at you and you kind of, you know, tail between the legs, you go off and go and get, and you come back two weeks later on a which, you know, the problem's gone away and it's another problem. 
So uh, yeah, it's, it's a tough thing, but I think it's, there's a great opportunity for service providers to offer that level of managed service, because um, that's what customers ultimately want. They don't yeah. want broadband this or you know Ethernet that. Yes. They want Salesforce delivery network, please. And yep. that's where ultimately the value is. 100%. So what do you see, like, what do you see next? What do you see as like the next one or two, like either trends or from feedback that you're receiving from your, the providers you work with or yeah. from customers directly or from community members, wherever, you're, wherever feedback tends to yeah. come from, what are you seeing as the next couple like big areas that you really want to think about trying to address or, yeah. I don't just mean markets to break into, but like yeah, yeah. like areas that like people are saying these are still, these other things are still challenges for us that you think you could like, st your company can step into and say, I think we might be able to help. Yeah, um, so I think for us, we are seeing um, so service providers that maybe just did Meraki, now looking at doing Meraki and Catalyst. Okay. Um, sounds like a fairly simple thing, but um, you know, it's, it's quite a different group of people that you need to deal with that kind of stuff. And then those same group of people are then looking at Thousand Eyes really excitedly as being something that they can then build into their managed service. But then when you start bringing those three things together, that's you know, a slight level of complexity again. Um, so what we are seeing is ultimately service providers wanting, wanting to make their managed service kind of deeper and more involved in the customer experience. Um, and not just hide behind a fairly thin SLA that says here is a broadband connection and, and that's basically what you're getting from us. So all of those kind of aspects of things are, are becoming more common. We're having more conversations with customers that through partners that want to do that kind of thing. Um, and for us, it's just about being able to visualize that information in a non-technical, easy to understand, service orientated kind of way. Um, so that's kind of what we're focusing on. Um, there's there's m new things that we're trying to bring in from the Meraki side of things, just going deeper and deeper into the Meraki ecosystem, um, just to make it as, as, as thorough uh, an integration as we can. Um, but to be honest, Thousand Eyes is the most exciting thing. Um, and in Thousand Eyes, in conjunction with Meraki, in conjunction with Catalyst SD-WAN, in conjunction with the bigger managed service, that's really cool. And that's really awesome. Really cool stuff. Martin, thank you so much for stopping by. Really, really appreciate it. It's great thank to you see very you. much.